windy out here, but it is a beautiful day. It is probably going to be the last uh, 80 degree day that we see here in Northwest Indiana. But this whole week has just been really beautiful. The weather has been really nice in the 70s. Uh, it does get really cool at night, but the daytime temperatures have been absolutely beautiful. Um, comfortable, breezy. It's a little more than breezy now, but um, I basically wanted to just come out and let you guys know that it is not too late to be planting. Um, this is the best time to be out planting your bulbs for um, tulips and daffodils and um, gladiolas, which I'm about to show you. Uh, planting gladiolas, um, any kind of bulb, spring bulb that you want to have in your garden for spring, you need to be planting that now. And the thing with bulbs is you're going to have to plant them pretty deep and there's a just like garlic you're going to have a root side and then you're going to have a pointy tip so you want to make sure that your pointy tip is up and your root side is down and rule of thumb anywhere three to six inches is a good uh, planting depth for your bulbs <clears throat> so let's start planting so i've got this tire here that I just kind of weeded out. I think these are um, Lily of the Valley. They were already here when I moved here onto this property, but I'm going to bury some of these bulbs in there. These are pastel mix gladiolas. So I have 20 bulbs. All right, see, 20 bulbs I have, and I'm going to bury some of these bulbs. See, really? Zeke doesn't want me to work. It's helpful to have a trowel. Come on, Zeke. It's helpful to have a trowel that has a, I don't know if you guys can see that, measuring ruler on it okay so I'm gonna bury this about three inches deep the instructions say to bury it about four to six inches deep so maybe we'll go four inches on these and basically that's it fall is the best time to get your bulbs buried get your bulb started because they have a chance to develop a strong root system and um, shrubs and trees as well fruit trees and fruit bushes and shrubs the, it's fall is the best time to get those things put out because they can establish a strong root system they don't have to fight pests they don't have to fight um, the heat and then when it gets, when the ground freezes, they will go dormant. And then springtime comes, they will continue to grow. So there's basic instructions on here that you can follow. You just dig a hole to the required depth. Place your bulbs in the hole. You want to make sure that your pointed side is up. So this flat side would be my root side. That's going to go down. And then the other side, which is supposed to be pointed, will go up. Okay? And then you cover with soil and you water it. Mulch it, which I have plenty of mulch. So we're going to mulch it heavily. And you can also put these in containers. So we're going to go ahead and put these out here in this tire. And hopefully by the springtime we'll have some beautiful gladiolas. Okay, so this is my area that I have to plant in, and I've loosened up all of the soil here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of dig a trench in here, and then I will just stick my bulbs in like that. 
So here I have like a trench going around this way. So I'm gonna put my bulbs in. You wanna give them at least three or four inches apart and stick them way down in there. Just like planting garlic, pretty much. If you've already planted garlic, then you should be able to plant bulbs. Now I've got those and I'm just gonna go ahead and cover them up and then I will also mulch this. And that's it, that's pretty, it's pretty simple. Now hopefully in the spring I'll have some beautiful gladiolas. Now that we've got some bulbs planted, let's talk about planning ahead. We're planning ahead by planting our bulbs now. We're spring next year. It really is windy. But I don't want to go in the greenhouse because it's so hot in there. So, let's talk about planning ahead. We're planting our bulbs now because we're planning ahead for spring. But there's other things that we could be doing to be planning ahead for spring. For instance, you should have been making journal entries throughout the season. For instance, what were some of your successes and failures throughout the growing season? What plants grew best in your climate? What varieties grew best? <clears throat> I'm planning to grow the Melrose sweet peppers again next year. Um, as well as the jalapenos, but I've also decided to add a few other varieties of peppers because I learned this year that I love peppers and my family loves peppers. So I want to grow a bigger variety of peppers. So I've added a few different peppers to my list. Um, one of them was King of the North which is a, a huge bell pepper, which we love bell peppers. I use them in almost everything I cook. So a, a nice big pel bell pepper is good. I added that. And I also added the habanada pepper because I see a lot of people growing it and they talk so highly of it and um, you know, like how good it does and how great it tastes. So um, I've decided to add the habanada pepper to my list. So for growing next year. I've also added a uh, different vari variety of zucchini because the regular zucchinis, I I just don't have a very good success rate with. Um, and I don't know why that is. I've tried to grow them in containers and I've tried to grow them in the ground. I did do really good the first year and I might go ahead and um, put the squash again in that space next spring. But those are all things that I have put down in my, in my gardening journal. Um, what locations did things do better in? My squash, for instance, I'm talking about the zucchini. I've had it in three different places over the past few uh, growing seasons. And it's only done good in one place that I've ever had it. So that to me says that I need to grow zucchini in that place. So I've designated that area to grow my squash. Um, other things like spinach. I cannot grow spinach or peas for that matter in the spring. I just cannot do it because it just, it bolts so quickly. But now that I have this greenhouse, that is gonna be a game changer for me because I can start those seeds to germinate for the spring which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, get your seeds together. Make sure you know what you want to plant for the spring. Get your garden layout together. Are you adding things? Are you taking things away? For instance, I grew the Sweet Million Cherry Tomato for the first time this year. I normally grow the Sweet 100, but this year I grew the Sweet Million and I have to say, I am very impressed with that variety of cherry tomato and I will definitely be incorporating that into my um, must-have list. Do you have a must-have list? Are there things in your, in your list that you must have every year? 
definitely. Green beans, must have, okay? And I learned this year that I need more green beans. So I have planned accordingly for next spring to make sure that I have the space and the seed to grow lots more green beans. You don't want to grow things that your family's not going to eat. Um, you definitely want to be mindful of growing things that your family likes to eat. My kids, for instance, they like um, collard greens, they like um, turnip and mustard greens and kale. They do like those things. And I didn't grow enough of that in the spring. And I regret that. So next spring, planning for next spring, I plan to grow a lot more greens. Um, it's just things like little things like that. Um, I'm growing rutabaga for the first time this fall. I'm going to find out whether or not I should add that to my list for next year. You have to make note of the things that you want to grow again and the things that you want to eliminate from the list. So you should be trying to do that now. Know that you know your space. Know how much space you have to grow in and how much space you need to designate for these plants. Like this year, I don't think I gave enough space to my squash plants. So next year, I plan to give a lot more space to my squash plants in hopes that they will do a lot better. Okra. I decided that I do like okra. I grew a few plants this year, and while they didn't produce a lot, what they did produce, I, I enjoyed, and I used, and I cooked, and I even ate a few that were raw and I actually like okra. So next year, I plan to incorporate a lot more space to grow more okra. It's things like that that you need to be thinking about now for next year because you might need to, you might need to prepare an extra space. And the way you can do that, if you don't have a space already designated, you can tarp a space and then the whole, the whole winter that tarp will lay down on that ground and come next spring when you lift that tarp up that space will be ready for you to break that soil up a little bit put some compost on there and it'll be ready for you to grow in but you have to think about those things now so that when it while it's overwintering it can be ready for next next spring uh, the same thing goes for compost if you are planning to have compost ready for next spring, you need to make sure that you're adding the right things to your compost now so that while it's overwintering, it can be breaking down slowly but surely. Okay, um, coffee grounds are a great addition to your compost and that is a perfect source of nitrogen. When the leaves start falling, put those leaves in your compost. If you're not gonna mulch your beds with those leaves, and you're not gonna do anything else with those leaves, put those leaves in your compost. You can do just leaf mulch. You can do make a leaf and coffee ground compost and that's it. You, all you need is those two ingredients and that will break down for you. If you have enough of it, it will definitely break down enough for you to be able to use next spring. But you have to be planning those things now. I'm gonna give you a list of things that I'm gonna, I'm gonna plant in the greenhouse when it starts to get a little bit colder, not now because we're still having a lot of nice weather and my greenhouse is about 30 degrees different than what it is outside. So right now, my temperature in the greenhouse is reading about 120, okay? And uh, I don't wanna be starting any seeds in 120 degree greenhouse for next spring. So when it starts to get really cool and um, the I can tell that it's really, the fall has really set in. I can plant a few things in my greenhouse that I can plan for spring. I won't be able to harvest them this year, but I can plan for them to be ready for next spring, an early crop for next spring. And uh, a couple of those things, I'm just gonna give you a short list. Kale is one of those things. It'll, it could sprout, it might sprout and it might get a few true leaves and a baby greens, but it's going to survive in the greenhouse. And then when spring comes, that plant will be ready to thrive and I will have an early harvest of kale. 
spinach, lettuce, arugula, mashi, claytonia, um, radicchio, radishes, beets, turnips, all of those things you could plant and put those in the greenhouse or under cover, a row cover, or if you want to designate a bed for that, you can do that too. Cover it with leaf mulch or wood chips or like a light straw maybe. Um, you can do that now when it starts to get cold and that stuff will sprout in the spring. So you have to be planning ahead. I encourage you guys, don't stop planning. Don't stop gardening. Don't stop dreaming about what your garden can be. Another thing that I realized I need to do is I need to take advantage of some interplanting. I didn't grow enough herbs this year. I always grow basil. That's a given because I always throw basil in with my tomatoes. It's like a habit. Wherever I have tomatoes, I have basil. But I wanted dill this year and I wanted a lot of it because canning became a very important thing to me this year. And while I got a canner and I got jars to can in, I didn't have enough cucumber and I don't have any dill. So those things are important to me. I plan now for next year that I need to grow a lot of dill. I want to grow a lot more pickling cucumbers and I want to grow more herbs. And I learned another thing this year. I learned that parsley is really good for deterring pests whether it be um, insects or critters. Parsley is really good for different diseases in your plants. Um, it's just really, it's an all around good herb to have in the garden. And I have never grown parsley. I've never, I never felt the need to grow the parsley. My camera's shaking. It's really windy out here. So that's another thing that I plan on incorporating in my spring garden for next year. So there are a lot of things to think about. There are a lot of things that you, that 2020 has made me realize that I need to do in the garden for next year. I plan on doing a lot more preserving. I plan on doing a lot more um, growing of things that uh, my family likes to eat and just becoming a lot more sustainable. I incorporated the rabbits for the manure, for the compost, for the um, amendments in the beds. So I'm really excited to see how that is going to make a difference in the garden. And I've started a worm bin and I'm really excited to be able to have worm castings and rabbit manure and not to, to depend on any type of fertilizer. And that's important to me. You, you have to realize what's important to you and what is your goal for your garden. What is your goal for your for growing? Why do you grow? What do you do it for? Do you do it for because it's therapy? Gardening is therapy? Do you do it to feed your family? Do you do it because um, you just like to give things away? I love to give things away. So um, sometimes I grow things that I don't even want like all those tomatoes that I grow, I don't, we don't eat tomatoes like that. We just don't. I grow them for the green tomatoes, but once they start turning red, we hardly ever use them. So I give them away and I enjoy giving them away. It's not a big deal for me, but um, you have to know what your goals are for your garden. You have to know your limits. That was another thing that I learned this year and that I've, always known is that I don't pay enough attention to my limits. I really hurt my back. I was lifting the um, fruit pots out of here and lifting it was not a problem. It was heavy and I knew it was heavy and um, my back was already hurting when I lifted it but it was when I went to set it down that's when I felt that's when I felt it and I went down like a ton of bricks and I couldn't get back up and I realized that I have to listen to my body and I have to listen when my body is telling me no 
you've met your limit. It's enough, it's enough. But I want to keep going and going and going. So you have to know your limit. Some things require more attention than others. And you have to realize whether or not you're going to be able to give the attention that's needed to those things. Um, like, for instance, that white moth, that white butterfly moth, that thing is like going to be the death of me because I cannot stay on top of spraying beam oil and trying to pick those little green caterpillars off. That really just drives me crazy. And I don't like to see my plants with holes in the leaves. It just really, it, it's a very, it's very discouraging. But next year, I made a note, I made a note that I need to make sure that I have some tool, T-U-L-L-E, tool, because I'm going to be able to cover my greens with tool, and that should make a big difference, okay? Neem oil is great, don't get me wrong. It works, it works uh, at so many different levels. You could put neem oil on your plants to, uh, to help with the, with the little green caterpillars, but you can also drench your soil with it. If you plan on overwintering any crops, if you plan on bringing plants inside, you don't want to bring any bugs in or any kind of uh, fungus gnats and things like that. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you somehow sanitize your soil. You can do that two ways. You can drench your soil with neem oil solution, which will prevent any um, bugs from the larva hatching or anything overwintering, okay? Because believe it or not, you can have things in your soil that will go dormant for the winter and spring those things will hatch and you don't want that. So you can drench your soil with neem oil and that will get rid of anything that you're afraid of overwintering or anything that you don't want to bring into the house, okay? You can also do that with the peroxide solution. And it's 3% um, hydrogen peroxide. I believe it's a, a tablespoon or maybe two tablespoons per gallon. And you can drench your soil with that. I'll link it in the description, the exact recipe for that. Um, but that will work too to sanitize your soil. So I just want to encourage you, it's October and some places it doesn't feel like fall, some places it does, um, but it's not too late to start planning. Now is the time to start planning for next year. So guys, I just wanted to encourage you guys to plan for next year things that might not have done good this year. Maybe you've gotten discouraged or, um, you know, we had a really bad season with squash bugs. Um, I was really discouraged with my squash this year. I pretty much got no squash. So um, next year I plan to plan accordingly ahead of time in case we do get a squash bug infestation again. Same thing with Japanese beetles. Um, this year was the first time that I've ever seen a tomato hornworm in my garden. Other people might see them all the time or have experienced, you know, run-ins with these things all the time, but I haven't. So there's a first for everything. Um, the seasons change, the climate is changing. Um, different things uh, are affecting our gardens every year. So you have to try to plan ahead. And now is the best time to do that. Things are going on sale. There's discounts on things. Um, it would be beneficial to find things on clearance. Um, different, uh, if you're into fertilizers, there's tons of fertilizers that are on sale now. Um, different amendments for your soil, different pest and disease control uh, options. So uh, keep an eye out for those things now in the fall when everything's on clearance and then you can plan ahead for next year. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope it sparked something in you to not give up, to stay encouraged, to think about next season, to plan, to dream, to 
you know, expand your horizons on what you can grow. You can grow so much in such a little space. Um, you would really be surprised by the time you interplant different things with each other, how much you can squeeze into such a little space. And you can really maximize that space and that fertilizer and that soil. Um, the key to a good garden is the foundation, which is your soil. So I would suggest that you heavily invest in building up your soil. That is something that's very key to a successful garden, building up your soil. Not just throwing fertilizer on, you know what I mean, year after year, putting my crops in and putting my fertilizer in and then you think that's it. You have to really build that soil up. Get some organic matter in there. Now is the time to do that. The leaves, get those in there. If you're not growing anything, let those plants die out, leave them in the ground. They can feed your soil. That organic matter will break down. It'll become food for your worms. Your worms will eat those, eat those plants and decompose them, and then they will feed your soil as well with the worm castings. There's so many ways that you can amend your, or feed your soil and build your soil up by just throwing coffee grounds in there uh, from time to time. It takes a little effort and it takes a little time, but it's worth it. Your soil is worth it because the more you give back to your soil, the more your soil gives back to you. So you guys, uh, that's going to do it for this video. It was longer than I expected it to be, but um, I really hope that some of you are encouraged or staying encouraged. Um, to grow next year, to continue to grow. If you haven't grown yet, to maybe start growing. But um, until next time, the more you know, the more you grow. Bye, guys. What's up, Zeke? Hey, boy. <laughs>